You're watching Otozmo and we're visiting Greece. Welcome on Otozmo. If you like our content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to like our videos. In this new episode of Otoz Mount in Greece, we visit, we start with Mycene. We'll visit the castle of Argos. And then we'll visit the city of Nopia. And we will visit the theater of Aspendus. Now we're going to go this morning. In full form. With a tapis. It's going to be good. Go for it. Early morning, we leave our hotel in Tolo. It will be a big day, as we hope to make four stops to visit Mycenae, Argos, Nofrio and Epidaurus. Our first stop is 30 km from Tolo, a 30 minutes drive. Welcome to Mycenae. It is one of the most important archaeological sites in the Peloponnese. The ancient city is moreover registered, like its neighbor Tirint, with the World Heritage of UNESCO since 1999. The fans of history and Greek mythology will be delighted to visit this site and to cross the famous Door of the Lions. According to Greek mythology, Mycenae was founded by Perseus following the accidental homicide of the king of Argos. Still, according to this legend, Perseus will have asked the Cyclops, giants with superhuman strength, to build walls for Mycenae. Moreover, for us, as for the Greek of the classical period, the large blocks of stone which one finds on the site seems to have been assembled by giants. Another fact, according to the myth, Mycenae is also the kingdom of the Homeric hero Agamemnon, leader of the Asians during the Trojan War. Homer described the city as rich in gold. So it's really windy, but we're in Mycenae. The site is Stunning. So where are we now? We are now uh, on, at the Mycenae uh, UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. So we are where it was the palace and uh, the temple of this, uh, so this uh, civilization that dates back from uh, 13th century before uh, Christ. It is indeed a pre-Hellenic city of the Bronze Age. Its important wall made its fame. It is believed that 4,000 years ago, Messini became a major pole of continental Greece, forming with its neighboring cities the civilization called Messinian. <laughs> it's closed. Oh, it's dark. The peak of the fame of the city would be located between the 14th and the 13th century BC. Mais c'est Vincent Robida. En direct de Mycène. The site is wide and has several singular places, like these monumental tombs with exceptional acoustics. Like children, we had to test these real ancient song systems. As you can see and hear, it is spectacular. So we are now in a tomb and you can hear the echo, which is extraordinary. C'est Agamemnon qui te parle. Look, I'm your father. <laughs> Not far away, the site also has a museum, but the most important pieces 
like the mask known as the Mask of Agamemnon, is to be found in the Museum of Athens. At the entrance of the site is the treasure of Atreus, which is part of a set of nine tallest tombs built on the site of Mycenae. According to archaeologists, it is the most successful example of this type of architecture, being the largest and the most ornate of the Tolos tombs. Look. I do. After our visit of Messini, we headed south. There, we climbed the impressive rocky hill where the Larissa castle is located. It is in fact the ancient and medieval Acropolis of Argos. The summit is now occupied by the ruins of a Byzantine and Venetian castle. It is said that the site was fortified and used continuously for 19 centuries. Just for the view of the Gulf of Naflio, the climb worth it. For those who have more time, as you can see, the city of Argos also preserve vestige of the ancient period, including a theater. After visiting Messini and Argos, direction Nafrio, where we will have a lunch. The seaside city of 14,000 inhabitants is a tourist mecca. It is dominated by the rock Palamedi, which dominate the plain of Argolid. The city has also two fortress. During the Greek War of Independence, Naflio was one of the objective of the insurgent Greeks. It even became the capital of Greece until the fall of 1834. In the 20th century, Naflio expanded due to the massive arrival of tourists from all over the world. It is very pleasant to walk in the street of the city, to have a coffee and to eat there. The food, uh, spaghetti, Perfect. Everything. After our stop of the morning, we had an excellent meal at the Yacht restaurant. Honestly, it was delicious. With our bellies full, we walked along the waterfront to enjoy a few minutes the charms of that small seaside resort. After our meal in Naflio, we drove back to Epidaurus. Fourth stop of the day, the visit of the ancient Greek city of Epidaurus is another must for those who wish to visit Peloponnese. The city is famous for having houses a Panhellenic sanctuary dedicated to Asclepius.
In the ancient times, the sanctuary of Asclepius was a mecca of medicine, as pilgrims flocked there from all over Greece to be healed by the healing god. The ruins you see were also home of some of the very famous doctors of that time. More specifically, it is during the so-called classical period that medicine was practiced at the sanctuary of Asclepius. The sanctuary has several public buildings, including a large temple built at the beginning of the 4th century BC. As in all the Greek sanctuaries, sport and theatrical events were organized in honor of the gods, and we can still see on the site a splendid stadium. The Asclepian game was as famous as those of Olympia and were organized within the framework of the cult of the god of medicine in the sanctuary. Remains of sports equipment have been found in Epidaurus. Google map Beside the sanctuary, the site is especially famous for its theater. Erected in the 4th century BC, this theater, in excellent condition, was also built to host the Asclepsians game. Check, check. The Great Calvary Building, which serves as a model for many other Greek theaters, could accommodate it up to 12,000 spectators. Connaissez-vous l'aumônier du cheveu? Non. C'est le père Huck. Ouais. Non, ni. Non. Merci. Last stop of the day, a little swim in the Bay of Epidaurus. Let's visit it that the famous theater. The place is especially known for sheltering the vestige of the port of the city, known under the name of the Sunken City. This is a rather unique activity, as you can literally walk and swim through the archaeological remains, including amphoras. From a bird's eye view, you can clearly see the walls of the building. All that remain is to dive to admire these ruins from closer. But be careful, there are many jellyfish in the area.
At the end of the day, we came back to Tolo, proud to have discovered most of the tourist site of the area. The Bay of Tolo is really beautiful. We understand why many people, including several French, come here every year. After having showered, we walk to another excellent table in Tolo, Maria's restaurant. Tria, Tria, Tria? Tria, Tria. From alumi to salad to seafood, everything was delicious. Well, it's not too bad. For the fish, Carla. After dinner, we wandered the streets of the city and had an ice cream. Thanks for watching that new episode of Auto du Monde in Greece. In the next episode, we'll visit the city of Mistra near Sparta, the site of Messene, and the famous city of Olympia. <laughs>